download from Triple J. For more music, current affairs, comedy and culture, triplej.net.au. And now... Triple J. Triple J. Triple J. Triple J mornings with Zan. 19... Big one nine. <laughs> Sucks being in America. There's been some sly, sneaky drinking going on, which isn't great. But, um, yeah, it's good. Young is good. <laughs> but you've been playing music for a while, haven't you? How old were you when you actually began performing? Um, I was 14 when I started. I was basically doing these kind of bedroom demos. And I was putting them up on MySpace. And then one of the guys who was sort of running a lot of illegal raves and big warehouse parties in East London found me on MySpace and asked me to come play some of his parties. So I started going to them when I was 14, like being completely crazy and absolutely awestruck by this crazy world I was in. Then record label people started coming down to these weird parties, standing at the back, feeling really awkward. And it kind of went from there, so yeah. What did your parents think of you as a 14-year-old girl going along to these illegal raves and, and playing? Um, they actually didn't mind it they came sometimes as well so uh, they were really like loving it they used to dress up and get offered substances and then be like oh god this is so weird you know <laughs> but um, yeah they've been so supportive they were cool Supportive parents, but also you've obviously had a very determined mindset from a young age to, to yeah. play as well. Did you know what kind of music you wanted to make from an early age too? Has it changed a lot of the years? Um, no, I didn't know. When I first started, I was sort of writing these kind of like nursery rhyme raps about dinosaurs and four-year-olds and things like that and used to dress up as like a five-year-old like with pigtails and big tutus and stuff and that was sort of when I was doing the rave scene thing and it was very kind of appropriate for there but I was young I was 14 and I had to figure out a lot of stuff and I guess that's why my record is I suppose a kind of coming of age record for like a 19 20 year old like I went through a lot of phases and then when I wrote Stay Away I realized that this is how I want to be writing and it was really reflective of what I'm like as a person and what I was wearing and what was going on for me at the time so it kind of stuck. What drew you to the particularly dark side of music that you play as well, this idea of goth pop? Was there any bands that you were listening to or friends that had passed you this kind of music that made you want to make it yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really inspired by people like Bjork and Kate Bush, also more electro artists like Kavinsky and Danger and people like that. But um, I kind of like stumbled across it myself because I think I was sort of... I wasn't going through a dark time in my life or anything like that, but I just kind of realised that I like to write sort of these poetic, kind of twisted lyrics. And I think that the kind of dark side of my music just came out through the lyrics that I was writing, so. Well, it seems very reflective. I'm not a teenager anymore, but yeah. I remember when I was a teenager that everything was very dramatic. Mm. I felt everything in hyper colour, much more so than you do in your 20s. Do you feel like your music reflects the kind of mindset of other teenagers as well? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely like, it's a record for everyone, but I think teenagers will be able to relate to it because I'm a teenager. So there's a lot of songs about kind of like boyfriends and then there's a lot of party songs and then there's the songs that are maybe a bit more selfish to me and a bit darker and a bit kind of just me sort of writing things that I think sound nice. So yeah, I, I think it is. I think it is a, a teenage record, yeah. And there's not necessarily a singular focus with your music as well in terms of having one person that you're singing about. Your songs sometimes have a bit of an abstract quality. Do you yeah. like keeping it a little bit unknown in your songwriting? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, for example, Bjork, who I'm inspired by, is kind of a perfect example of that. She writes about throwing things off a cliff for, like, a whole song. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I'm also inspired by a lot of photographers and filmmakers like Pierre and Jill and Darren Aronofsky and you know people like that so I really enjoy bringing like this visual element to my work I think it's really important so I guess maybe that's why it's sometimes a bit weird <laughs>
first heard you when you appeared on Alex Metric's collaboration and yeah. since then you've released Nuclear Seasons. Yeah. Did you work with other producers for this record that we're going to hear later in 2012? Yeah, I mean, the record is actually basically split between working with two producers, Ariel Reistard, who did Nuclear Seasons, and this other guy, Patrick Berger, who has also worked with Robin, who's another influence to me. Um, and he worked on the uh, first single that I'm putting out called You're the One. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad I've got like a small team of people because they completely get me and I can go in and be like, this is what I want to do, this is how I want to make it sound you know, make this happen and then we just make it happen, so yeah. <laughs> so you're the woman behind it driving it all? Yeah, definitely. I'm a bit of a power freak, <laughs> so I feel like I have to kick them all into shape and be like, yeah, this is what we're doing, you know.